This week, we talk about PlayStation's Game Pass competitor, which could arrive next week, and Microsoft's investment in the future of gaming. So let's just go ahead, together, as a people, and take it out! Welcome to another Sensational Sunday. I'm Mike, and this week, this Sunday, I'm talking about some news, some gaming news, but on Wednesday, I'll be back with the GPD Win 3 review slash first impressions. This is more of a first impressions video, so don't miss that. But for now, let's hop into this PlayStation news. So I've mentioned it a couple times in a couple videos about it. PlayStation has their upcoming service to compete with Game Pass. It's a rumor, of course, but... It's likely to be true because Sony has always competed with Microsoft as far as features, like their reaction to Xbox Live and having to create PlayStation Network. So it makes sense they're gonna have their own subscription-based service. So I'm gonna briefly go over what the rumored tiers are, so that way we're all up to speed on what's rumored to be happening. So the rumors are gonna have three tiers. There's gonna be $10 a month, which is PlayStation Plus as it is now. $13 a month is supposed to give you an access to a catalog of games, a lot of classic games, some slightly newer games. And then there's gonna be a $16 a month tier that's gonna give you access to game previews, as well as the catalog of games and the cloud gaming service. So those are the three rumored tiers right now. And the reason that we're talking about this again is because it's rumored that this could drop next week, which would be crazy. I mean, they'll be kind of out of nowhere, but if they're gonna drop it, they have to drop it eventually. And with supply getting better of like GPUs and chips in general, this would be a good time to drop it to bring interest back to the PS5 because once PS5 and Xbox are both readily available, that's when we're really gonna to start to see the battle of the systems. Right now they're neck and neck because they're basically selling out instantly, but you know, once they're available on the market, then it's gonna be a different story. So of course they wanna have something in place to compete with that. Now the one thing, Again, the rumor stated is we're not going to get day one games. So like this article mentioned, don't expect like God of War Ragnarok to be on the service. But I'm wondering how old the games are going to be. Like what is a good time frame if they're not going to do day one releases, which to me is a big deal. That's kind of one of the bigger appeals of Game Pass are the day one releases. So if they're not going to do that, then what kind of games are we going to get on the service? Is it going to be like a year and then they'll come to this service, maybe six months? I think six months might be a fair compromise because if you really want to play the game, you can play it now or you can wait. I mean, personally, I think that they should just charge a little bit more money or have a higher tier where you do get those games day one because I think a lot of people will probably pay for that. I mean, realistically, if you look at Game Pass per year, it's the price of three $60 games. They could probably charge a similar price and still make a profit off of it. So it does suck that they're not going to have the games day one. But as I mentioned before, a lot of Sony's games are single player games, so they don't really have anything to monetize off of aside from DLC. Whereas Microsoft does have like a lot of multiplayer stuff like Gears of War, Halo, Sea of Thieves, where they have in-game transactions that you know you can monetize off the game after it's already out. I mean, they're giving Halo Infinite's multiplayer away for free, and there's a reason that they're doing that because they know they're gonna monetize off of that multiplayer. So Microsoft is in a different position. Their first party games are different. So I can understand like they're just not gonna make as much money in general off their games. A lot of their bigger titles are single player, like Uncharted and God of War, Horizon. Those are all single player games. So yeah, there's just not as much opportunity to monetize off of them. So they probably just don't wanna take that loss by putting it on the service on day one. But again, I just think if you're really, really trying to compete, make the pricing tier if people want that. You know, even if it's like $20 a month or something like that, Make that tier for people that want that. If you really want to compete with Game Pass, I understand it might not be as cheap, but I still think it should be an option. But we'll find out more hopefully next week. That would be cool if it launched next week. I'd definitely be interested to see what kind of games they have on the service, especially because it was rumored before that this was going to be how they're incorporating their backwards compatibility, that they're going to have games from PS1, PS2, and PS3 on that service. So I'd be really interested to see what titles are up there and how they perform. I'm really curious as to how Sony is gonna handle this. And with that out of the way, let's hop over to Microsoft for a little bit, because they recently announced that they're investing in development of cloud games. So this is gonna sound similar to the Google pitch, because their whole thing was like, hey, you can develop games in the cloud, 
and there'll be less latency for things like multiplayer games and you have this crazy hardware where you can do these massive games and not have to worry about designing it for like the system. They're talking about all these benefits and then they essentially shutter all their game studios and nothing ever came of it. But Microsoft is way more invested in gaming, obviously, with the Xbox brand being around since 2001. They're a lot more invested in gaming than Google was. Google thought they were gonna come in and make some money. I don't think the service is doing as well as they'd hoped. But the reason I think the story is interesting is I've always been curious about how a cloud-based game would look. Like, what would be the benefits, especially if it was something maybe like an MMO or like a 100-player account shooter or something like that they could do that was cloud-based. And if it was designed cloud first, then they could probably compensate for the latency. So I'd be curious to see like a cloud first developed game and how that would run, especially if it was like a AAA title. So Microsoft investing in this is obviously so they can move this technology forward one, but two, they can get exclusive cloud games to Game Pass and it'd be like, oh, you have to have Game Pass to play this, it's cloud exclusive. So obviously there's a benefit for them, but it's also exciting to see this technology move forward. Also the technology, Azure, I believe is what it's called, can be licensed by other companies. So them doing this can also benefit other companies that wanna get into cloud gaming or use their cloud services for other things as well. So I'm really excited to see what they do. I'm excited to see if they actually follow through and make a cloud-based game like Google said they were gonna do and then kind of gave up on it. All right, that's all I got for you for the news this week. It was kind of a short week. Like I mentioned earlier, I will be back on Wednesday to talk about the GPD Win 3. But until then, let me know what you think in the comments of this upcoming PlayStation Game Pass service. Would you be interested in a game subscription service from PlayStation that didn't include their first party titles on launch? Like you might have to wait like six months or a year. Personally, I think that's gonna be a deal breaker for a lot of people. For me, it depends on what games they have on that back catalog and how old the games are gonna be. Like if it's a six month wait, it might still be worth it, especially for that $13 tier. We'll have to see, hopefully we do get something next week. That'd be pretty cool. But until then, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to tell a friend, tell a coworker, like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell notification to be notified when I drop a video, and I always do at least two things at the same time. Peace.